Hi guys, so let me just start by saying that this video is not gonna be about the ultimate zoom lens. This video is gonna be about creativity over convenience. So this lens that I have right here, very useful tool, it's the Canon RF 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 zoom lens, a really, really great lens. And it's very useful in many situations. It's super high quality and it's really convenient. But again, it's not all about convenience. What do I use instead of this? What's my go-to lens to cover this range? Well, it's not one lens, it's three. I have a nice combination of lenses that's gonna give me a better focal range than this, better wider aperture than this, and actually better quality than this. So basically, instead of using a 70 to 200 2.8 zoom, which everybody is using, so what am I using instead? Instead of that, I'm using 50 millimeter 1.2, you can use a 1.8, a 1.4. I'm using a 135 millimeter f 2.0, which fits right in the middle of that zoom range. And on the long end, I'm using a 300 millimeter, the big guy, f 2.8 lens. Now I know this is a lot of lens, this is a lot to carry around. But again, the theme here is creativity over convenience. It would be great to not have to carry this stuff around with me, but I'm getting more unique shots, I'm getting more high quality shots, and I'm doing a lot more creatively with these lenses than I am with the 70 to 200. So now on the long end, here I've got a 70 millimeter 2.8 lens. On the long end of my combination, I've got a 50 millimeter 1.2 lens. Over two stops wider maximum aperture at 50 millimeters, and it's a wider, it's 50 millimeters compared to 70. Right in the middle of the focal length, I've got, and this is actually a, a smaller and lighter lens than the zoom, 135 millimeter f 2.0. So I'm shooting at 2.0 in the middle of the range as opposed to f 2.8 using the zoom lens, a full stop wider. And on the long end, even though I'm shooting at f 2.8 with this lens and I'm stuck at 2.8 with this lens also, I'm getting 300 millimeters out of this and only 200 out of this. So I'm getting an extra 100 millimeters of reach out of that. I don't need 80 millimeters. I don't need 150 millimeters. I need a few spots to be able to hit. I need a 50, I need a 135, I need a 300. Anything in between, I can move a little bit closer, a little bit further back. Again, it's about creativity over convenience. I don't even have a 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens to even show you because I don't have one. But that's probably the most popular widely used zoom lens in the world. Which means anybody who's out there who's got one of those lenses, and which is a lot of people, all of their shots are between 24 and 70, and if they're shooting wide open, all of their widest aperture shots are at f2.8. So all of these shots that you're seeing from people who are using the zoom lens are between 24 and 70 millimeters and are all at f2.8. Go outside of that. So instead of using, I gotta change up my combination a little bit, instead of using a zoom lens at 24 to 70, 2.8, I'm gonna use a 24 millimeter 1.4, which at the wide end is two full stops wider than a 2.8 zoom. In the middle of the range, again, I'm using the 50 millimeter 1.2, which is more than two stops wider than the zoom. And at the longer end, I'm going beyond 70 millimeters now, and I'm getting 135 millimeters, which is a lot more reach, and I'm shooting wide open at 2.0 instead of 2.8. So again, three lens combination here that I'm using instead of a 24 to 70 zoom lens, it's gonna give me a lot more creativity, it's gonna give me a lot more chances to actually you know, explore a scene and work things out because I'm not just standing in one spot and zooming, I'm actually gonna change lenses and then reconfigure and recompromise and reframe my shot and get something that I probably wouldn't have gotten if I had a zoom lens on and I can just turn it and zoom in and out a little bit. I'm getting, I'm doing things different. So I'm shooting with these lenses, instead of being within 24 to 70 at 2.8, I'm getting shots between 24 and 135 at 1.4, at 2.0. I'm getting these nice wide open shots with if you're looking for some shallow depth of field, you're gonna get much nice, better background blur, you're gonna get nicer images. You know, these lenses, prime lenses, tend to be uh, really, really good. You know, even the older ones, some of these are, this is a really old lens, and it's still really good. Uh, a lot of fun to use. I'm a prime lens shooter. I get the usefulness of a 70 to 200, that's why I have one. If I'm on a paid gig, and I need to be able to be shooting you know, portraits at, you know, f2.8 or f4 is fine, and there's 
kids moving around or it's a sports thing and I need to be able to, to move quickly and I don't have time to change lenses, that's where the convenience comes in of being able to use a lens like that in a situation like that. The convenience of having a zoom lens is great, but when you're able to slow it down, when you're able to take your time and you're able to just go out and compose and be creative at your own pace and do what you want and you don't mind carrying around a little extra weight, which really is not that much, you know, get yourself a nice backpack. It really is not that bad. I've been doing it for years. You're gonna love shooting with prime lenses. So it's, there is no ultimate zoom. I wish there was a 15 to 400 constant aperture 1.4 zoom lens. You know, I don't care how big it is. I'd still be using it because I'm, I'm getting what I want out of it basically then. Um, but using it this way, using my prime lenses in place of a zoom lens, I love doing it. Get outside of that basic standard that everybody else is using. You'll find that if you're doing it, you'll get more creative. And then there's times when I'll go out with just one of these lenses. I'll spend a whole day out shooting with just the 135 or just a 24 millimeter 1.4 and getting creative, finding shots that fit that lens in particular rather than finding a shot and I won't, I already have a 24 to 70, so I have the lens that covers it. No, there's situations where I find myself in where you know what, I wish I had, you know, I have a 135 lens on and I wish I had a wide lens. I wish I had a 24 or a 35, but I don't. So now I have to make the framing, make the composition fit based on the lens that I have. And I find that I'm being more creative than when I do use a zoom lens. I'm thinking in terms of 24, 50, and 135 on this zoom. I'm finding those spots and I'm composing based on the focal length before I actually even pick the camera up to my eye to take the shot. So I'll be in a scene. I'll see it and, I'll, and I'll, start, I'll see the image in terms of either 24 or in terms of 50 or in terms of 135. And then I'll zoom before I even pick it up and start zooming in and out. I'll put it on that focal length right here on the lens and I'll get the shot with that. So I'm always thinking, because I'm doing it all the time, I'm always thinking focal length first, composition first, before actually just getting the image with the lens that I happen to have on. So go out and get yourself a prime if you don't have one. Start with a nice light cheap prime like a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, a 35 millimeter 2.0 lens, something like that. Go out, play around with it. I promise you're gonna like it. You're gonna have a good time with it. I've been shooting primes for longer than I can remember and I'm just, I love them. So uh, any questions or comments, put them down below. We love to hear from you. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you next time.